Hello everybody on YouTube, this is Super Nintendo, and welcome to my video review of Elfin Lead. Uh, before I continue, my window is open because it is really hot in here right now, and uh, there are some kids playing outside, so um, if you hear some noises like that, that's what that is. Also, there might be cars. <laughs> but, um... I'm going to go over a basic overview of what Elfin Lead is about, go over my thoughts on the animation, the voice acting, the effects, um, my thoughts, and uh, whether or not I think you guys should buy it and how well it holds up, okay? Let's go. Elfin Lead begins with a woman escaping a facility with a metal mask on her head. And stuff and gets basically shot and develops some kind of a memory impairment. During this, during her escape, she slaughters tons of people with unidentified means, at least in the beginning. So, fast forward a little bit, we meet Koda and Yuka. Two, I want to say high school people, maybe college. I don't know. School is really confusing when it comes to Japan. But um, they go to the beach and come across this girl who, because of her memory impairment, can only say Mew or Mew or whatever. And uh, let me turn off my DVD player. I just finished watching the last episode. And, uh, basically, it, basically, Mew is, or Mew is a Pokemon, pretty much, not a Pokemon, but she's a mutant, and the government wants to kill her, that type of shit. And it involves, it, it unravels into a big conspiracy and a bunch of Evangelion-esque plot lines. Leading into a big mutant battle, like, well, I say a big mutant battle, but only really three mutants are ever, only three mutants are actually shown in the current time, so. Um, my thoughts on the animation I don't know when this came out. I want to say it's like 90s because it's it's got that level of polish, let's call it, from something you might see from Evangelion or Trigun. Um, the, the, <coughs> at least with the English dub, because I only, I'm mostly a dub person, um, I, I don't know whether or not the dub is accurate. If I had to guess, I would say not. Um, but the dub lines sometimes do not match the mouth movements. And I know that's kind of standard for anime, but this one really doesn't. Where sometimes the voices will start before the mouths even start flapping. Or sometimes the audio I don't know if it's an age thing but the audio on the blu-ray version does not translate very well into blu-ray there are some scenes where they are muffled kind of like if I were to hold my mouth over like this and I were to be talking you know it sounds a lot like that in some scenes it's not like a it's not like a major point against the show. I don't know why I did this for that, but a major point against the show, like something that ruins it, but it is noticeable and distracting when it happens. Um, as far as the voice talent itself for the English dub, I'd hesitate to call this a good dub for some of the characters. Um, Koda and Yuka in particular... Um, at least Coda 
a, a lot of the time sounds like he doesn't really understand what the hell he's saying. And it, it's kind of like Sonic Adventure 2, or no, Sonic Adventure, where uh, Tails is reading his lines and it's like, you do not understand a fucking word you are saying, do you? Um, there are other characters too, like um, Mew and uh, a little girl um, whose name is escaping me at the moment, even though I just finished watching an episode with her in it. I have... I'm having a massive brain fart, but knew a little uh, homeless girl who is later taken in by Koda and Yuka, and another mutant girl um, that is named like Nani or Nana or something later on. I swear to God, the little homeless girl and Nana have the same exact freaking voice actor. And when it's just them talking to each other, I swear to God, it's the same voice. And it's really distracting when it happens. I'm like... And, and they got that, like, whisper, like, like sort of kid whisper for their voices, too. And um, when it's just them talking to each other, it's like, okay, can you speak up a little bit? It's not that I can't hear you. It's that... I don't want to hear you whispering to one another because it is really, it gets annoying after a while and it goes on way too long sometimes. Um, oh, I forgot to talk about the, the action and the gore. Um, this is not a kid series. Look at the begin. look at the cover. This is not a kid series. The first, I want to say five minutes is filled with very much gore. Something that wouldn't be out of place in a horror series. Um, so, you got people getting ripped apart, heads flying everywhere, blood and guts, painting the walls. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's a gory fun time. Um, The effects, particularly with the little invisible arms that the mutants have, are really well animated, I think. And uh, it really feels like an otherworldly presence, an otherworldly effect, let's call it. Um, the story, I'm not going to go into spoilers, but... Um, the characters, I'm going to go over uh, a couple of characters that I actually remember. Um, Coda has, has a traumatic event in his past causing him to have memory impairment to where he doesn't remember things very well. Um, Yuka is his cousin and... I know this is commonplace in Japan, but Yuka, his cousin, is in love with... Yuka is in love with Koda. And, um... I got no problem with it, but I can see this turning off some people from the series because there is, um... Promises of incest. And I know that in Japan, this is a common thing, something to do with keeping the family bloodline strong or something. But um, if that's not the reason, don't bite my head off for it. Um, that's my understanding of why that is a thing in Japan. And, uh, oh my God, if I could tell them to shut up. Um, uh, ignoring them, but... um. Yuka, Yuka is constantly trying to get Koda's attention and basically be the mother figure of the house. And um, her constant jealousy with Koda 
is really annoying, especially with that incest thing in there. Um, again, don't have a problem with it, but... I, I was constantly wondering whether or not they are actually cousins. And if that was just something added for the English dub, I looked it up. Apparently, they are actually cousins in the original work. And apparently, in the manga, they have a kid. Again, don't have a problem with it, but it is it is kind of... Um, not off-putting, but... It just kind of gives me that uh, uneasy feeling, which... In this show, is actually kind of welcome. Um, then we have uh, Niu or Lucy, which they are both the same character. It's just Niu is a blank slate. She doesn't know shit, and she basically has to be taught things over the course of the series. Lucy, her actual personality, I find her rather interesting. Eventually, we get to see her backstory. And speaking as somebody who went through, let's call them similar events, they are, I find Lucy, this naked girl in the middle, very relatable. I might not have horns coming out of the sides of my head, which actually look like adorable cat ears. Um, I don't know if that was intentional, but the, like, look at them. Like, stupid thing. And, uh, like, look, they look like cat ears. And, uh, yeah. Now, as for my thoughts and recommendations, since I need to wrap this up, I got three minutes left on the clock. Um... The, my thoughts, this series is pretty good. Um, at a certain point, I was mostly watching it out of, okay, I have a couple of anime on my shelf that I haven't watched yet. Might as well knock this one out. So, um, yeah. <coughs> but as they started... <coughs> ah, God damn it. As they started going into the backstory of these characters, I found myself enjoying this a lot more. Um, I'm mostly a person that loves a good story. I love a good backstory for a character. And, um, I can stomach a pretty bad story, but if the plot holes, inconsistencies thing, uh, hits the fan pretty much, then it starts to annoy me. And thankfully, in this series, there doesn't appear to be very many plot holes or inconsistencies. So, there's that. Um, and as for whether or not I recommend this, a lot of people have been telling me that this is a one of the best anime they've ever seen. I don't see it. To be honest, maybe it's because I didn't watch the sub version, but I don't see it. Um, I do recommend people to see it if you want a um, mostly slice of life with horror, sci-fi, um, gore elements. But if if you're not into like older anime then I completely understand. So I would give this series a four and a half out of five. That is my recommend that is my little review thing of Elf and Lead. Next time you see this, I will probably be on Cashern Sins, as that is one other anime I have yet to actually sit down and watch all the way through. So As they say in Russia, das vadanya.